It is funny how uh, when I talked earlier about you know, uh, even the bad patterns people stick with, because I noticed that I had meditated consistently for a long time and I felt great because I do experience anxiety and depression issues. Uh, and I don't mind saying that. And, and it, it helped me immensely. And then life gets in the way and you, oh, you know, I'll like you just I'll find time to do it. I'll, I'll make it happen, make it happen. And you don't. And you go like, why do I feel so down? Why do I feel like? My time is not my own. My day is not What's my missing? own. What's missing? And I go, oh, gee, do you think it might be meditation? Like I happen to really enjoy meditation. I feel phenomenally better at it. And I now I've worked in, uh, we mentioned Wim Hof. I went, mentioned, worked in some of his breath work and, the, and a lot of holding of the breath, things like that. And I'm like, wow, I really like this. I re it makes me feel good. And maybe it's, a, maybe it's psychological. Maybe Holly, you could tell me what the science is, but I, I I write a lot during the mornings, right? And I, I'm a copywriter by trade. That's what I do to pay the bills. And uh, I feel creative only in the morning and best after working out and doing breath work. I feel like my brain is fully oxygenated. And if there's a good idea in there, it's just waiting to come out, you know, because because uh, I've let it, right? And that that's how I feel. So and maybe this is... No, I'm sure oh, the science good... is absolutely there. In fact, I'm sure that Lisa and I both, once you just mentioned breath work, we probably yes. just both took a deep breath because yes. <laughs> unfortunately no. we forget to breathe and hypoxia. And we, you know, we've, we've all had issues with this in the past couple of years because of being under mask and, and stuff like that. It is not a good state for ourselves. It's not a good state for our bodies. It's not a great state for our brain, any of our cells that work in any of our organs. And so having that breath and we get, I think, you know, we've mentioned anxiety a couple of times. Um, so when we get anxious, we get a little bit more shallow in our breathing, right? Mm. Cause there's a, a pair a, more of a sympathetic nervous system that's kicking in. And so no, we're not being chased by a bear, right. Or, or not almost getting hit by a car. We're just kind of hanging out and it's not a great physiological state, biochemical state for our body. And so that breath work are, you know, you are setting yourself up for complete success. And I would encourage everybody, why don't you, you said it really quickly, spell the gentleman's name of the work that you've been into. In yeah, I find it's fascinating. I actually bought his book. I have it right here in my bookcase. His name is Wim, W-I-M, Hoff, H-O-F. I mean, it's like the shortest full name I've ever heard, but. Right, so you um, said Wim and Hoff and I'm like, excuse you like i'm sorry yeah. like, I'm, I'm the i've if you go on youtube he's got a gazillion videos on youtube he's got a massive following all over the world uh lisa you, you seem to recognize the name yeah right i have seen some of his videos i have not taken any cold plunges but definitely yeah. find work very interesting i mean he's very much of uh when you talk to me he's very much um i hate to you i don't want to categorize the man but it's got a, a little bit of a, a free spirit shall yes. we say attitude uh, and his voice is very almost magnetic. He's got, to, uh, I think, I believe he's Dutch origin. He's, he's got a very, very uh, distinctive accent, very easy to follow, very easy to listen to, which kind of leads me to my midday pattern. We've talked about this before. Like we all get up early. What I find is if I do my writing and then then I'm do my admin stuff and I'm really busy and then I have a kind of a lag time between the time where I'm trying to sit down and prepare dinner. I said, this is the time. This is the time where I'm kind of like, oh, I'm tired. My brain is fried from the day, but I want a second wind. I have started this year to do these ice baths, uh, the Wim Hof style. So uh, what I did, I went on Amazon and I bought like a, I think it was like 80 bucks. I bought an inflatable uh, single person tub and I put it in my basement. I'll spare you the pictures. I do have pictures and video. I think I actually did one for Pure Health, and um, it's kind of funny because uh, they loved the idea. Of course, I mean it's and and I I what I do is I dump a twenty pound bag of ice in there, and it's I'm in New England, so my basement is pretty chilly anyway. Uh, so the water stays cool. I dump a twenty pound bag of ice in there, and I then I go back up and I change into my bathing suit, come back down, and I go in there for two minutes. And I'm telling you, it's like night and day. I, I come out and I did it just before this call. Um, I'm on the East Coast and we started at six. I was in sitting in ice at 5 p.m. Uh, my time today. Uh, and it was fantastic. 
Yeah. I was feeling grouchy and the weather, the weather this time of year is like, would you please get warm? I'm tired right. of it. I can't and not it. gray. Not it's, it's awful here right now. And, um, and I needed it and I really, and I, now I'm like, I'm ready to go. Right. And I'll, as you, I'll have to stop talking right now because I'm yeah. so, you know, That's I'm ready right. to go. <laughs> you're, you're like, it's funny. You said the difference between night and day and I'm like, but it's actually the midday hack that yes. you are, are yeah. Yeah. offering up. So hack. An incredible amount of research around cold plunging and cryotherapy and cold, cold, cold. It's an old, like hydrotherapy. Um, I'm on a standing desk, so I'm waving back and forth. Sorry, I feel like I'm surfing over here. Um, but cryo, I mean, uh, hydrotherapy is one of the most ancient applications of medicine, right? So hot, cold, hot, cold, always ending on cold, but that cold and you know what? Just get in it and do it. And I love the hack because there are cold plunges that you can buy for $2,000, $4,000, $5,000, get installed, be outside. You can just turn it on. But there are simple ways under a hundred bucks that you can have this in your home and that you can do it each and every day or whenever needed. But I I love it. Yep. I, let me tell you, let me iterate on that. If somebody was really interested in do it and they want to try it for under hundred bucks, this is what I did. Went on Amazon and I bought an inflatable single person tub. It's, I want to say it's about $80 for $12. I bought a portable little circulator pump that you might see in an aquarium, a little aquarium. Mm. I dropped that in there to keep the water moving. And I bought a little uh, spa chlorine. So I just do a little shake once a week. So I don't get any, you know, the water doesn't get stale and moldy or anything like that. And it keeps circulating. I'm like, this is perfect. And it's under a hundred dollars and it, it changed, it changes. The, and now I don't do it every day as part of my routine. I, I will alternate like every other day and things like that, because, you know, and, and, it, and I feel like it's almost more impactful if I don't do it every day, but that's my midday kind of hack to like, like I'm ready for the night now I'll get off at, at 6 30 here. Uh, I'll, yeah. when we wrap up, I'm going to get I'm cooking dinner and, and I'm just all fired up. I have my energy back and you know? so awesome. I can, that's now awesome. I'm controlling my evening. That's how I control my evening. So, right. um, so we should we pop over to the evening and, 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 and check out Lisa's yeah. best, best hacks for that. Yeah, well, I think my best hack, and I know it doesn't work with everyone's schedule, but it definitely works for my family is we eat dinner fairly early. So we eat dinner by five o'clock because I don't like mm-hmm. to eat right before I go to bed at night. And then that gives me at least very easily a 14 hour fast if I don't eat till seven o'clock in the morning. So it just makes it super easy for me. So we eat early. Um, then we may take a walk after dinner, something like that. I try, I don't like to use the word try. I'm working on not doing any work after dinner time. So I, I really cram a lot into my day and, and I probably need an ice bath or something to wake me up in the yeah. afternoon. But I like to get everything done before dinner to leave time for my family in the evening. But that's my biggest tip. And then a lot of people will say to me, you know, I get really hungry out if I eat that early. But right. another thing I like to do is to maybe just have a little bit of berries or something with coconut whipped cream, something like that after dinner, just a little bit of a light dessert so that I don't get hungry later on in the evening or crave something mm-hmm. sweet something like that. But, but eating early has been a game changer for us. It's interesting. It's interesting. Holly, what I like there. So we have the early eating thing and, and then minimum. Okay. So um, minimize the time. Okay. What uh, I just got my little warning from zoom. Right. So. All right. Yep. We've got uh, only like eight minutes left here. So, yep. Okay. One of the best things. So we mentioned, like I mentioned you musings in the, in the beginning of the day, like jot down, what do you want to keep to yourself? What do you want to accomplish today? Or you do the same thing you do it the night before. So I came up with this thing, you know, it was, it was kind of geared around uh, Dr. G medical examiner, right? So she's an, she, she does autopsies and she does autopsies on people that are dead to find out why they died. And guess what? At the end of the day, our day is gone. We're never going to get it back. That time is gone. So I always have folks try to do a daily autopsy. You know, why don't you check out? How did it go? Where did the you musings that you started in the morning kind of go astray? So with no judgment, just with curiosity, right? Because it's important to be curious before critical. Like, let's say you had the brownie that you thought you weren't going to at the work party, right? That was there. Um, You had that extra glass of wine that you thought you should not have. So instead of like uh, 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 getting into that shame cycle, 
you actually just understand, hey, what were you feeling? Um, what was going on? Get in there and get to know yourself a little bit more because then you have the power. Knowledge is power. Self-knowledge is superpower to maybe make some little changes as those experiences come up again and again. So the, 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 the nightly autopsy of that day that we're never going to get back, once again, two, three minutes, just be with yourself. Um, it's the best. Right. I agree so much. And really for me, it's all about making tiny changes that lead to big results and better health. So, like so <laughs> exactly. And so exactly what Holly just said. So if you do have that brownie, it doesn't mean all bets are off and it's not in a way of procrastination, but just give yourself permission for that redo. So the next day you have a fresh start to not have a brownie or, you know, just be easy on yourself. And, and just because you may have uh, done something that you didn't want to that day, you know, have the brownie or didn't take the walk or didn't drink enough water, just start over the next day and just keep moving forward. Yeah. And I will say, and Art, I want you to get your time in here, but, and if you continue to, and if folks, if you're listening and you're watching and you continue to struggle and then slip up, get some help, partner with somebody like Art, you know, Lisa, I'm not familiar with what you do, so you can you can actually use this platform. I, I am a naturopathic doctor. I have a practice and such, but get some help with somebody who does this inside and out, who's seen every single situation out there, who knows personalities, who can bond with you and who you are, because there, there are a lot of self-guided um, helps out there, right? Mm -hmm. But if it's not working for you, if you keep, I, I would say, lean in and, and get some help and work with somebody who will care for you and listen to you in the way that you need it. Yes. Yeah. I couldn't agree more. Like I, I do use the evening as you said, like a, a, a post-mortem, an autopsy, say, you know, how did that go? How could I have done that better? Like when I, I always meant, I mentioned, I've done my to-do list the night before. And I don't beat myself up, like you said, Lisa, if I don't get everything on my list done. I mean, that's then it becomes a stressor and not a relief, yes. an organizing tool, right? I, and I don't want that to shift into a stressor, right? That, that, that's not fun. I create enough stress for myself in my brain already. I don't need any extra help. So it, it, when I don't get that list on, I, it's right, I go easy on myself. It's okay, you know, just like, hey, did something get in the way, you know? Hey, I had to stop everything and take my dog to the vet. He's sick. Right. So mm -hmm. Those things are gonna like life's gonna happen and not let you always do it. So, uh, but the evening I do I do find uh, I, what I'm thinking about in the evening is number one, how does this improve my sleep, and how does it make tomorrow better? So that's that's what I have in my mind. And so I do eat relatively early. I don't eat at five. I eat it at, at six. It's very rare that I eat after six p.m. Um, I have, I sit down and I relax. I complete my to-do list. Um, I do like to, I think one of these things that talk about decluttering your brain, I like to wake up to a nice clean house when I wake up. I don't want to be staring at last night's dirty dishes. You know, it's like, okay, we're already off and running. We're ahead of the game. And I do like to stick to a very, um, I have a reading ritual every evening, shut all the screens down and I read and I rotate what I read, I read a lot of stoicism stuff. I wrote and I rotate between, um, you know, uh, fiction and nonfiction and all these kind of things by a reading ritual. So that that quiets my brain down. And as soon as I started doing that reading ritual every evening, I found my sleep quality improved yeah. really dramatically. Dramatically. You know? I, I'm I'm so happy that we didn't. I mean, listen to the the watchers and the listeners out there. I think that we're all here assuming that you've had enough of the sleep hygiene. Like I've had patients come to me with sleep, you know, fractured sleep. And they're like, and don't tell me about sleep hygiene because they've read it all. They've done it all. The dark, the room is dark. The, you know, the screens have been off. Like, you know, it's like, we have to dig deeper. And I understand that. So with all due respect, um, right. just to review, listen, your day starts the night before and the, the basics, if you're not hitting the basics, those are important. That sleep hygiene is so desperately important. Um, uh, the, the way that I stumbled upon it, and I know we're getting out of time here, but when I go down to my mother-in-law's, yeah. all right, when we, at she, <laughs> our guest room is on a lit sidewalk near the beach in Redondo Beach. And I was like, oh my dear. And it's the very first time that I ever wore a sleep mask because the light is just so pervasive. Mm. And in the regular time where there's, okay, a little light from here, a little light from there, I never did. 
it's the best night's sleep I had ever had. And I was like, what was different here? Guess what? I actually blinded out everything. So by accident, I um, created that cave-like experience. And now, no matter where I go, whether I'm traveling or I'm in my home, that sleep mask, those, I use cotton balls because some earplugs will irritate people. Mm. I, I keep the sound out. I keep the light out and my sleep is restorative. And then I wake up the next morning and, you know, like I said, your, your day starts the night before. So hitting the, right. all those high points and those basics are extremely important. That blue light, yeah. Like blockers, shutting them down or reflecting it with a little bit of red light. Yeah. And I've had a lot of those conversations with clients as well. And, and about, because sleep, we all know how important it is. Of course, as, as health professionals, we know how important it is, but guess what? It's not, and we've seen it. It's not a topic people want to talk about. It's not a, I, they want a sexy cure for all their problems and telling the sleep better is not that cure. You know, it's like, well, you just fix your sleep. Like, okay, you sure you don't have some other ritual that I can do? I mean, sleep is, it's just a boring topic. It really is, you know, and not to make a pun, but it's like sleep is, is boring. And uh, it's not something that people want to spend a lot of time on, unfortunately, even though they should, you know. And uh, yeah. one of the fine things I kind of glossed over uh, to, to my final point is uh, the fixed bedtime. You know, our bodies crave that consistency of up at this time. Everyone's pretty good at getting up at this time because you had to be at work, right? But we're not so good at wrapping things up at, at the same time, you know, because on the weekends that goes out the window for some people, they're too social. That starts on Thursday, you know, so it's, it, it really is varied, but the, the sleep thing we're pretty good at. I mean, it, it it's, uh, we, we, we want to make sure that we're not blowing it out of the water and going to bed at midnight on, on just because of the Friday night, you know, or it's movie night or date night or party night, whatever, you know? So, so that's that, I thought that was a pretty good summary. Uh, everyone, any, any final thoughts? We've got about a minute and a half left on our time. Uh, does anyone have any final thoughts they want to throw out there? Lisa? I just also wanted to say to really just listen to your body and rest when you need to rest, because I think, you know, so many people, myself included, we just keep pushing ourselves. Okay, I, you know, it's not quite 10 o'clock yet. It's not bedtime yet. But if, if you feel tired at nine, listen to your body, go to go to sleep. We've, we've started listening to our bodies much more in our household as well. And it really makes you feel so wide awake and vibrant in the morning as opposed to pushing yourself right. on. Yeah. Uh, just to stay up later for the sake of staying up later. Yeah. If I, if I glance over and I see that the clock is after 7 p.m., I'm like, okay, I'm in the clear. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I can go up and grab my book and feel really yeah. great. Okay, I know. Exactly. Or please wrap this up because yep. I don't want us to get it caught up. So, or all right, hey, Lisa, it was a pleasure meeting you. It's the first time we've had you on on a webinar. Thank you very much. Thank it was you. Great, uh, Thank Holly. You for always. Me. Sorry. Go ahead. Thank you for having me. Oh, it was fun. It was fun. Holly, always a pleasure to see you again. You, you look too. way, way warmer than I am here. I'm sure it is. So, um, hey, folks, I hope you enjoyed it. And, and I always say this, have one good takeaway, right? Pl apply, try to apply at least one good thing to your patterns and you're going to see improvements. All right, everyone, enjoy. We will talk to you soon.